Hey there. So I'm 20 hours into practicing string bending. Um, and I used to be kind of studying along with Guthrie Govan's string bending masterclass. I think that's probably still kind of true, but I've branched out a bit. Um, last time the way I did this, the recap video was I showed you all the montage of me playing and then kind of all the describing, which I don't know if necessarily best reflects the process for me and I don't know if it's as interesting for you. So what I'm going to try and do this time is I'll talk about the things I thought were interesting in this 10 hours worth of practice um, and I'll try and show you clips that demonstrate that. So I think first of all it's I have to say I'm having more fun playing lead guitar than I used to. Now partly this is because um, maybe I don't practice lead guitar enough. This has been the first time I've actually focused on lead guitar in years, like in literally years. Um, and I think that's doing good for my confidence as a, as a kind of lead guitar player and um, being able to lean into vibrato harder. That I'm more, I'm just more comfortable and confident, say, you know, uh, at the very upper end of the neck, that's making a big difference in terms of my confidence in getting around the guitar and feeling like I can play guitar solos. <laughs> I'm also finding um, that although I initially kind of started these videos to practice my um, bending, um, I ended up really enjoying playing around with slides, with pinch harmonics, um, all kinds of articulation that I guess I hadn't really realized how much I really do enjoy them and how they're, they're really part of my playing. Um, and so I stopped trying to fight it so much I started leaning into it a bit. I suppose one thing as well is I find traditionally that the, the blues guitar vocabulary doesn't speak to me emotionally, right? It just doesn't make me feel very much. Um, but I did find that when I really got into it, there was something about the kind of like, you know, the beat up fingertips and the sweat and, you know, really grinding against the strings. It did, it did, it was fun, right? And I don't know if I'm going to be listening to that much more blues, but I really got into it a bit more, and yeah, I, I think I, I think I appreciate it more now, right? I can't play blues for shit, but you know, I kind of get it a bit more now. You know? <laughs> Something I did try a few times was bringing in that kind of um, violining technique I'm using a lot at the minute for imitating Lauren and Blade Runner and all that stuff um, and try and bring it into some lead improv. I didn't really manage to make it work very often, but uh, I really want to try more of this. So I'd also say string bending is just one of the most physically challenging things we do on the instrument in terms of the amount of brute force you have to apply and the amount of precision you have to apply it with. Uh, there's not very much like that. So the fast legato stuff I do, in many ways that's a lot easier physically, technically, than the string bending I've been working on. Um, and I think that would surprise a lot of players. We tend to associate technique with playing fast, playing lots of notes, playing wide interval jumps, all of that. 
And I think honestly, if you nailing like uh, a, a perfect fourth bend is really fucking hard. Um, and I think Sean Lane was right when he said Jimi Hendrix was a technical genius. And we should appreciate that a bit more. I really enjoyed the technique Guthrie showed as well of going for um, kind of um, a pretend multi-step bend with a kind of bend and slide technique. Um, and I know I'm gonna have to keep practicing it because sometimes I completely fuck it up, but it's really cool. And if you don't wanna make gigantic Steve Lukather bends, then maybe this is something you might want to bring into your playing as well. learned that the way I'm practicing uh, where I'm essentially trying to improvise and focus on a technique at the same time it has um, drawbacks right it has advantages as well right so I'm learning more fretboard knowledge I have to actually play melodically or try to um, but it has drawbacks in terms of focus right so if you play a really cool idea that isn't string bending related do you follow the idea right if you like it because that's happened sometimes um, but then I'm not really practicing string bending. Or uh, on the other hand, um, do I start forcing string bending even when I'm not feeling it? And I think this caused a bit of conflict for me, but as I got better at string bending, it became less of a problem to hear ideas I wanted to play that used string bending. So it's something I'm gonna keep in mind, and I think it's kind of interesting. Um, also, sometimes you just completely forget what you're supposed to be practicing. <laughs> Also, because I've been playing through so many backing tracks, um, I've branched out into styles I guess I wouldn't have improvised over before. Um, and I think sometimes that's worked out quite well, and I've really enjoyed it. I guess finally, um, I would say that I've definitely got what I wanted out of this first 20 hours of practice. Now, whether I'm gonna extend that onto like 30, 50, 100, I don't know. Um, I might look at other parts of my lead playing, but I think keeping some regular lead playing in the mix is probably on the cards. I think also recently I've been really enjoying YouTubing a bit more. And this kind of content takes a very long time to create, and I don't know if it's as fun for you guys to watch. <laughs> so I'd like to hear some feedback on that. Um, I, I do like being a better lead guitar player, but I also like actually helping people out with their playing, and that's kind of what this channel is about, right? It's not really so much about me as it might initially appear. Um, yeah, so I guess those are my thoughts, and I'd be very curious to see what you have to say in the comments. Thank you.